and welcome to Newport First Hands Ask an Agronomist Live, which is our interactive question and answer session. I am Denton Alvaranga, Senior Agronomist Research and Development, and I will be answering your questions as best as possible this evening. To begin with, we have some questions that would have been placed to us before. So I will start by answering those questions that we have in-house. The first question, the first question, can I please have your guide to sweet corn production using your range of products? And also, what is MOP? So can I please have your guide to sweet corn production using your range of products? So I will begin by saying that in order to provide you with a nutrient management program for sweet corn, there are a number of approaches that we can take and develop with you um, in mind. The first one is that we could design for you a precise nutrient management program. And that would involve us coming to your location, um, conducting a, a soil analysis, and based on that particular soil analysis, then we will design for you what we call a precise nutrient management program. Now, there's another um, option that we could also explore. One, we could, if, we are, if it is in an area that you, that you can advise us of, we can use our in-house data on soil results for a particular community or area, and we can design what we call an improved fertilizer program for you. That's the second option. And the third option is that where no soil analysis is available or any history of that particular area, we could provide you with a generic fertilizer program that is based purely on the nutritional requirement of the crop. So that wouldn't take into consideration um, any soil details. So, so in a nutshell, the, the program that you get, we would have to consult with you, depending on where you are, what your target is. If we can do a soil test, we can put together a recommendation that is most suitable to meet your operation. Now, there are different options in terms of fertilizers that you can use depending on the system of production that you have. And what do I mean? So if you're growing sweet corn and you have a drip irrigation system, then we have the option of creating for you a, so a water-soluble fertilizer program that you can apply through your drip lines. In the event where you only use your drip lines to, to, to apply water, but you don't have a system to facilitate fertigation, then we'll give you a granular fertilizer program. So the... Depending on what your, 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 the design of your system is, where you're located, um, if we have access to soil test results, or if you have the time for us to conduct a soil analysis for you, that will determine um, the nutrient management program that you get for your, your sweet corn. Now, the question is, what is MOP? Now, MOP is a water-soluble source of potassium, mainly potassium. So MOP is the shortening for murate of potash, which is a highly concentrated um, potassium source, which is basically 60% um, potassium. What it is usually used for, potassium is a, one of the important macronutrients that plants require for its growth, especially during that production phase where the, the, the size of the carb um, is, de is being developed or in crops that produces fruits where you require fruit development, um, food quality, and also um, maximizing yields. So the MOP is a source of potassium, murate of potash, to be exact, 60% um, potassium, um, to be exact. Now the second question says, what are the mixing application instructions for your soluble premiums? So for the benefit of our platform, let me outline what are these individual soluble premiums. So our soluble, our line of, of premium soluble fertilizers include um, the initiator premium, which is a starter um, ration, and these are water soluble, meaning that they are designed to be um, applied to a drip irrigation system primarily, or they can also be applied um, foliarly to the leaves, or in some cases, 
It can be um, diluted in a container and applied as a soil drench. Now, each individual member of the, of the premium line would include, as I started, Initiator Premium, which is a startup NPK Russian 153015 to be exact. We have the Growth Premium, which is a 26614 NPK ratio. We also have the Flowering Premium, which is a, a, a 21614. No, 21620, um, beg your pardon. And we have the production premium, which is at 12,040. We also have to add to that our, our nourish, which is at 2020, 20 plus micro elements. So basically, for persons who are applying foliarly, meaning as a foliar spray, we recommend that if you're doing a, a large area, that you don't exceed three pounds per 45 gallon drum. The reason being, these water soluble fertilizers are concentrated and it can result in burning or what we call phytotoxicity um, on, on, on your leaves. So for persons who are, if you're, if you're doing for foliar application, that is in, you're spraying to the leaves using a knapsack sprayer or a mist blower or, 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 a, or an equipment of that nature, we recommend that you do not exceed three pounds per 45 gallon drum. Now, what about persons who are just using it for, for household um, backyard purposes, um, small operations, the ornamental persons, um, that, that kind of sector? Then we, we, we use it as an average of between one to two tablespoons per gallon of water. That's for each, any one of these members of the, of the, the, the soluble premium line. Yes? Now, the, the, the more complicated part is where you want to design a, um, a, a fertigation program using the premium line. Of course, for persons who operate in a greenhouse, or if you have open field conditions where you have a drip irrigation system and a fertigation system to facilitate application via, via, via the soil, then what we usually recommend is that the quantities that you will need will first, one, will be determined by the crop that you're growing, two, the nature of the soil where you're operating three your target yields and also we ensure that well we we recommend from a technical standpoint we ensure that they are presented in a form that is affordable and makes sense from an economic standpoint so to put together a program using the the, the premium line um you could reach out to us our team of agronomists is here ready and waiting to facilitate you, we'll have a consultation and based on the discussions, we will provide you with a nutrient management program that is most suitable for you, which, which is comprised, which will be comprised of the water soluble fertilizer as a premium line. Um, the third question says, um, what is the cost for the soluble premiums? For the cost of the products, we, we direct persons to our, we have our in-house tele-sales representatives who are, who are very efficient, you can call our offices and we can give you um, the, the price list for the different um, products. And if it is a situation where you are located outside of Kingston, our sales consultants can also guide you to the nearest suppliers or distributors that would have these products um, in stock. So we, 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 for prices, we encourage you, we ask you to reach out to our our sales, our telesales representatives, which who are in house and are waiting for to receive your calls and give you the necessary um, guidance with respect to, to cost and where you can access these products wherever you are in the country. The fourth question. The fourth question is: I'm trying to source some fertilizer for my lawns. Do you have any recommendations? Of course. So at Newport First Hand, we have different options. For, 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 for lawn grasses, for turf in general. Now, one of them, we have a, a ready-made formula that is comprised of what we call, um, it has a slow-release component. And it is a part of what we call our mega line. So for lawn, we have a mega grass, which has a, a slow-release component, component. What is the benefit of that? It releases the nutrient over a period of time, therefore making the nutrient available for, for, for longer periods. So that's our mega line. So you can ask, you can call you put first and ask about our mega grass for lawns. Also, our 
granular fertilizers are just as good for, 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 for lawn maintenance. And traditionally, um, some of the most popular um, fertilizers that we would, would have, would have rec um, recommended with success would include um, a 6918, that's a NPK ratio 6918, which is a granular fertilizer. And you can alternate with a, a straight nitrogen source such as sulfate of ammonia or urea. Now, for persons who are planting a, a newly established um, lawn, you're just establishing a lawn, a, f a fertilizer source that is high in phosphorus could also be useful. So 14, 20, or 14 would be a good um, option for, for a newly um, designed lawn, a lawn that is a newly established lawn. 14, 20, or 14, for regular maintenance, you can rotate between a 16, 9, 18, and a straight nitrogen source of urea or sulfate of ammonia or green plus. All right, so that would give th those, you can ask for those um, at, our, at our offices or various distributors um, island wide. Now, for someone is asking, I have about 1,200 square feet of lawn, it urgently needs help. The zoysia turf needs fertilizer and help with weeds. Now, there's a product that is mentioned here that is, that is a weed and feed, and it cannot be found anymore in Jamaica. Do you have a similar product? Now, unfortunately, we do not offer a, a, a fertilizer source that also has the ability to control weeds. So, unfortunately, it is not a part of our, of our current offering of, 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 of fertilizers, but... Um, for, for, for the maintenance of, 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 of the zoysia, of course, you could do some of the removal um, via, via manual means, depending on the size of the lawn. Um, 1,200 square feet, yes, it will take a little effort, but some of the, the weeds can be removed manually. And for example, um, where you have broad leaves, you can ask for a selective um, herbicide for broad leaves that will it will control the broad leaves but it will leave your 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 zoysia growing green and lush now another question um can you tell us about can you tell us about the fungicides that you have available and what they can be used to treat so at, at this moment, Newport First and has registered um, two fungicides. One is called Eradicate. As you can, I'm holding the flyer, you can see this is the Eradicate. And it is a broad spectrum fungicide, systemic fungicide with what we call it as protective, curative and eradicative action. And it can be used in a, a number of crops, which include um, banana to control the banana cigatoka, both, both black and yellow. Um, for persons who do crops such as um, corn, it can be used to control the, the corn rust. For persons who grow onions, the botrytis leaf blight and the purple blotch are fungi that the, the eradicate will assist in controlling. And of course, powdery mildew in a wide range of crops, carrots, um cucurbits among others um so to to summarize you're looking at crops such as bananas beans um bulb vegetables such as onions scallion carrot celery corn both sweet and common corn of course peanuts and sugarcane for persons who grow sugarcane their orange rust is one of those important diseases that can um, limit your production and productivity in 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 sugarcane so the eradicate is is one of the fungicides that we have a uh, broad spectrum systemic um fungicide active ingredient two very popular active ingredients that is the propiconazole and azoxystrobate which are two very popular um and well known active ingredients so with eradicate you get a combination of both active ingredients in one super product now the other, the other, 
The question is asking, um, can eradicate be used in watermelon? Yes. However, we must ensure that um, the, the previous interval is a, is a bit long based on the active ingredients. Therefore, we, we would use the eradicate in the first segment, so in the establishment phase and the development phase of the watermelon. But we'll give ourselves at least 30 clear days between the last application and the time of harvest. That's for water melons. Now, another question is, yes, so I continue to talk about our, our fungicide. So the other fungicide that we have in house is called Clearway. And in plain Jamaican um, vernacular, it means exactly that. It is used to treat a wide range of fungicides. The active ingredients, again, is a combination of two actives. Carbendazim, which is a popular active ingredient, and Mancozeb. So the combination of these active ingredients um, um, presents a very efficient product. Broad spectrum can be used in a wide range of crops, ranging from tomato, hot pepper, sweet pepper, cotton, peanut, okra, onions, scallions, potato, and also in orchard crops such as mango, avocado, just to name some of them. Right? So it's a broad spectrum fungicide as well. Clearway is the name. The, the other question states, what products would you recommend for use on carrots? And will you be doing any training sessions for carrot production? Well, in terms of our next training session, we will, we will be sure to advise you of when we'll be doing carrot, yes? So I'm sure that in, in the upcoming months, one of our technical representatives will be looking at carrot, and we will be sure to advise you on this same platform on our other social media um, locations as, as we have finalized those dates. But in terms of what products I'll be using my, can be used on my carrots, one, it will go again. Um, we have the option of doing a precise nutrient management program, and that the products will be determined by a soil test. That's, that's one. However, we also have the traditional approach. So the traditional approach would include um, fertilizers such as your 14-28-14 or 11-22-22 as, as, as starter fertilizers. You have some persons traditionally who use the 11-22-22 as the only NPK blend and they use it in split applications. So for example, they would use a, um, two to three bags at, at, at the establishment stage and then at around 30 days after they come up with another four to six bags of, of, of 11, 22, 22, or the 14, 28, 14. Those would be the traditional um, options. And of course, persons will um, do side dressing of, uh, of a nitrogen source, if required, of a sulfate of ammonia or urea. That's the traditional approach. But at Newport First Hand, we also um, would like to share with you on a personal level of individual consultations and introduce you to our precise nutrient management program which you can reach out to us. We can have one of our agronomists contact you and walk you through the process of providing a precise nutrient management program for your carrots. The question is, tell us about your organic line and the Nitromax and others. Well, um, we are proud to tell you that we have, we have a full line of organic fertilizers at Newport First and We call it the first organic. First organic. And the line is comprised of, you would have mentioned the Nitromax. It is comprised of a starter, which is, as the name suggests, it is a, a, a blend of nutrients designed for the establishment phase of any crop. So the starter, which is a liquid 100% organic fertilizer, it would have the NPK ratios of 10% nitrogen, 20% phosphorus, and 0% potassium. As the main emphasis here would be root development. Then, of course, the other member would be the all-purpose. As the name suggests, all-purpose can be used on any crop at any stage of, of, of crop development. And the, 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 the analysis with respect to um, NPK um, would be 
nitrogen, 13% phosphorus, 13% um, potassium. And then in the same line, we have our nitromax, which the participant alluded to earlier. So the nitromax is a straight nitrogen source. It can be used at any stage of the crop and it supplies nitrogen. So if you're, if you're experiencing deficiency in nitrogen or is a situation where you want to prevent nitrogen deficiency symptoms, then the Nitromax presents a source of straight nitrogen, 20%. So that's, that's a high percentage of nitrogen to prevent or to correct nitrogen deficiencies in any crop of interest. And of course, we have the first organic potash, which is a straight potassium source, and it, it is used to prevent potassium deficiencies or to correct potassium deficiencies in, in, in cases where they are present. And it can be used in, in all um, crop categories, especially in crops which have a high demand for potassium, such as your fruiting crops. So your bananas, your tomatoes, your sweet pepper, those crops usually have a high demand for potassium and usually, um, usually there's a need to supply additional potassium to prevent or to correct potassium deficiencies. And of course, the last member of the first organic line will be the first organic finisher, which is a 10 0 NPK ratio. As the name suggests, it is usually used at the production stage. So, for example, if you're doing put, um, tomatoes, you're speaking about the stage where the fruits are on the tree and you want to ensure that you get the good quality fruits, good size, uniform ripening, uniform development, um, reduce um, damages as a result of, 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 of lack of nutrients. Then the finisher presents an excellent opportunity. So, to summarize, the line for the first organic, it will include the first organic starter, First organic all purpose, first organic nitromax, first organic potash, and the first organic finisher. So that would be that would cover our our organic line of fertilizers. And they are they are liquid organic fertilizers. That's the first organic line. And what someone is asking, can my soil be tested for for cultivating multiple crops, yes. So the soil test is a general test. It's a comprehensive test, and it provides you with results of um, the, the chemical composition of the soil in terms of the nutrient levels, but it also provides other parameters such as the organic matter content of your soil, the pH of your soil, which is also a chemical parameter as well. So when you do a, a soil analysis, it's a general soil analysis that gives you the general status of the soil. Therefore, we can use it to make decisions whether to establish different crops, which crops will be most suitable naturally, and also in the event that there's a specific crop of interest, we ensure that when, when, you're, when, when, we, when we provide a nutrient management program for you, it takes into consideration the nutrients that are deficient or, 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 or excessive, and we take into consideration what the crop requires, your targeted yields, your design of your system, and what is most suitable for you. Another question is coming in. Um, when you do a soil test, what exactly are you testing for? So as I, the question before would have answered some of that. So we test for the, the, the levels of nutrients. So we test for your macronutrients. Nitrogen we don't test for because it is not practical. Because nitrogen is so volatile. It, it changes so frequently. So we test for phosphorus. We test for potassium. We test for um, your secondary macronutrients such as calcium, sulfur, magnesium. And we also test for your micronutrients such as your boron, zinc, manganese, iron, and boron. And in some cases um, where persons have, um, for example, for persons who are operating on the, on the coastal areas where sea line intrusion may be a factor, we may choose to include um, the testing of sodium that will indicate the level of salinity. In the soil as well. So what we provide, what you get in a, in a soil test result is a comprehensive report. It gives an indication of physical properties, chemical properties, and also other parameters such as the organic matter content and so on that will guide us to, to, to assess the, 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 the natural soil fertility and also to create 
the necessary program depending on the crop of interest. Now, another question is, what advice would you give someone who is interested in farming? Well, the first advice I would, I would give is that, um, one, you start by researching your market. That's, 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 that's the first advice. And for, for those of you who are watching the news, you will see we're marketing sometimes. Persons get wonderful, bountiful yields, but because of poor um, marketing opportunities, then we are, we are seeing where many have, have suffered great losses. So my first advice would be, one, look at crops based on their ability to provide um, at least um, a good chance of providing a market. Four, that's the first. Secondly, then you will look at um, the size operation that, you, that, that you're looking at, the scope of the operation, and then, of course, with the aid of our technical team at Newport First Hand, we assist in, 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 in technical consultations. So, for example, things such as um, site selection. Um, we do um, special site visits. We do analysis, for example, on, for soils. We, we, we assist you by, by helping you to identify what grows naturally in different areas. We assist you in, in noticing um, the, 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 the particular characteristics of different geographical areas and the limitations that comes with it. For example, in low-lying areas with heavy clay, we, for example, there are some crops that just don't do well in heavy clay. It requires good drainage. And then there are some crops that require low temperatures and are seasonal. For example, like Irish potato, just the name. Um, some of them. So those are some of the intricacies that our technical team also assists you with. And of course, the, 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 the government agency that is responsible for, 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 for guiding farmers, RADA. We also encourage farmers to visit their RADA, their local RADA parish offices, get registered, and also the different programs and marketing linkages that RADA also assists farmers with. So those would be some of the um, the the recommendations that I would make to someone who is, who is planning to enter agriculture. And of course, it would be meaningful to pass by Newport First Hand. Our technical team, our team of seal, our sales consultants, um, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are here. We have the, the necessary capabilities. We have the track record. We have the professionals to assist you in whatever farming venture that you would decide to, 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 to take on. Another question is, what advice do you have for persons with farms in areas prone to drought? Now, one, the first thing is that you would have to consider um, water harvesting. Now, the thing is that most of these areas that are prone to drought, they also have a, a rainy period. So one, one of, a good investment would be, one, an investment in a water harvesting facility. To, to harvest water during the periods when you have a lot, so you can store, or at least have some amount of, of storage for when you have very little. That's one. Now, there are some crops that have higher demand for, for water to, to produce at, 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 at their um, maximum potential. So you don't want to look at those crops. So for example, there are some crops that are known to stand up better in, in dry areas. So for example, um, sweet potato is one of those crops that when you go to areas such as South Manchester, where when it is dry, it is very dry, you realize that those farmers, they, they tend to do more like sweet and potatoes, like cassava, and also tree crops. Yes? So these are some of the things that you may have to consider. And also, um, the investment in a drip irrigation system, because a drip irrigation system is, is, is known to be the best available um, form of irrigation, especially when you have low um, amounts of water. So it, it, a drip irrigation system maximizes the use of water, so you use much less to achieve much more. So, these, so you'd have to think about a, a, a drip irrigation system, a water harvesting facility, and, uh, and of course think about crops that have some amount of tolerance to, to extended period of, of, of dry conditions. Can your products be used in hydroponic cultivation? Yes. Now, so if you're doing, if you're planning on establishing a hydroponic um, system, then of course we have a full line of liquid fertilizers in the case of our first organic line. If you're interested in 
an organic system or we also have a full line of water soluble fertilizers such as our premium line which i speak about our initiator our growth premium our flooring premium our production premium just to name some of them just to name some of them and um so yes we do have a a, a full line of products to suit whichever system of agricultural production that you have now another question says what are what are so good crops for for okay what are some of the good crops for hydroponic cultivation now let me tell you what are some of the the popular ones that we have seen where farmers have grown with some amount of success and makes um economic sense one of them is lettuce as a matter of fact lettuce would easily be at the top of the list in terms of crops that have a uh, economic advantage when grown in a hydroponic system so lettuce is one strawberry is a, is a is a is another that 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 quickly um comes to to mind and of course sweet pepper is also another crop that can be grown in a hydroponic system sweet pepper, sweet pepper tomatoes lettuce and then you have some some of the other niche crops such as the herbs such as kale and cilantro and some of the other special herbs um, that persons may have um, niche markets for yes um, another question um, does the MOP and the MAP that you that you distribute come in a soluble form? Very good. So we have MOP in both granular and soluble forms. So if, if so we have so we have MOP that is, that is murate of potash in both granular and soluble forms. What what's the difference? The the, the, the granular option is designed. For, for, for more of application in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a solid state. Now, the water-soluble form is designed to be dissolved in water, 100% soluble in water, and is designed primarily for drip irrigation systems, foliar application, or if you're doing a soil drench. That's the difference. But we have both forms. Now, the MAP, we currently have MAP only in the water-soluble form. However, if your operation is designed for granular fertilizers, we have a direct substitute. So the DAP, diammonium phosphate, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a good um, substitute for MAP in the case where you want a granular option. What's, what are the specs? So I think um, DAP would be a 1846.0. Yes? Where a MAP would be closer to a, a 12610. Both are high percentages of... of, of, of of phosphorus so just to repeat the map that we have is 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 soluble however if your system is a is designed for a for granular applications then the direct um equivalent alternative would be the dap a diammonium phosphate yes also we we have a we got a, we, I, don't, I don't know how well you can see um this picture but what we have here are sweet pepper plants demonstrating some leaves that are, we are seeing some yellow lesions, some spots, yellow spots, we call them chlorotic spots. Um, physically, they appear to be um, fungal leaf spots. Yes, that, that, that the symptoms appear, they are very similar. To fungal leaf spots. It could have been a cercospora leaf spot or one of the popular um, fungal species that causes leaf spot. And also that I have additionally here is, is, are, is, is a root with some, with some white fungal growth. Yes? Now we also, we always encourage that whenever you see, uh, whenever you have samples or cases of these, we encourage persons to use the different resources and agencies that we have available. So, for example, at the Borders Research Station, you can collect a sample, you can reach out to your extension, radar extension officers, and you can make arrangement to deliver a sample to the laboratory to do what we call a pathogen test to determine exactly which pathogen it is. Because guess what? There are thousands of different 
um, species of, of fungi that can create similar symptoms. So the, the best practice would be to send a sample to the lab as early as possible to identify exactly which species it is and therefore the, 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 the subsequent method of control will be base and same. Now the question is, do you sell insecticides and what do they treat? Yes. At the moment, we have one registered insecticide, which is First Strike. That's the name of it. It's called First Strike. When you look into the farm store, you'll see a, a label First Strike and you see a, a green leaf with a, with a worm on it. And yes, the worm on it, um, it is... It is, it, is, it is indicating that the primary class of insect that the that they first strike controls are really what we call the Lepidoptera class. Or that is a class where the, capi, the, the caterpillars are formed. And which stage of the, of the insect it controls? It controls the larval stage. So that's what we call the worm stage, the larval stage. That is the stage that do the damage. So for example, you see the butterflies, the main, the main damage that the butterfly do is really the laying of the eggs, but the butterfly will never physically hurt a plant. But it lay eggs within three days, those eggs will 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 will, will hatch, and you have a new um, um, set of, of larvas in in a, in a couple of days. Um, so our first strike is designed primarily for for the control is a, is a contact and stomach stomach insecticide. The active ingredient is Indoxacarb 14.5%. Um, it controls most of your, your, your larvas, your worm species. And it is also used in a number of crops. So, for example, think of the popular crops. Kalaloo is one of them that will come to mind. It's one of those crops that the worms enjoy as much as us to, 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 to do some amount of damage too. So, yes, it can be used in Kalaloo, crops such as onion, skellion, in crops such as sweet pepper, tomato for your fruit worms, for example. And, of course... It also helps in the control of what we call leaf miners. Now, those leaf miners are, are, are those insects that, that cuts like a, a channel. It looks like a river channel meandering um, downstream. That, that, is what your, 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 that is what your leaf miners look like. So the, the first track will give you excellent control over leaf miners and different species of, of, of worm larvas. Yes? So that's the first track. Now... Do I have to use your MOP or MAP in the irrigation system? Well, as I said to you before, there are different approaches that we use. One, there are cases where we, we always recommend persons to do a soil analysis. Now, there are cases where we do a soil analysis and we realize that the soil is already high, rich in phosphorus or sometimes in potash. Now, in the case where phosphorus is high or excessive, there are times that you need very little or no MAP. Now, in some operations where the potassium is super high, then you may use no MOP or just very little. Yes? So it will depend on your soil type, what your soil conditions are, and of course, the crop you're growing and the demand that that particular crop as. Now, there are other sources. So, for example, if you do not want to use a MOP as your preferred potassium source, there are other sources of potassium that we offer at Newport First Hand. One of them, for example, um, is we have, we, we, have the, we have the ability to provide potassium sulfate. That's one. We have potassium nitrate. And we also have MKP, which is monopotassium phosphate. So we have different alternatives, and also we have our premium line, the final member of the premium line blend, which is production premium, which is a 12040. That 40% 40 in, in the production premium represents potassium. So there are alternatives to MOP that are rich in potassium. Those would include the production premium, the MKP, monopotassium phosphate, it would include your potassium nitrate. Those are the popular ones. And if you're a granular operator, the 15535 is a blend that is rich in, 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 in potassium. As a matter of fact, what is in the MOP? 
in the 15.535, really, is granular, granular MOP, those red grains that you see, um, that provides the potassium percentage of that blend. Is clearly like the diethyl. Is it more effective than rhodomyl or diethyl? Okay. All right. So the first thing is the clear well like diethyl to some extent. Now, as a matter of fact, the active ingredient in, in diethyl is mancozeb. Yes? Now, the active ingredient in clear well is mancozeb plus carbendazim. So it is like, man, like diethyl in the sense that, yes, one of the components in clear well is the major component, is the only com major component in diethyl. However, clearware is a combination of two active ingredients. So in addition to mancozeb, it, 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 it also includes um, carbendazim. So it gives, so for example, diethyl would be a contact fungicide. Yes, however, clearware would be classified as both a contact and a systemic fungicide. In the fact that, um, yes, the mancozeb is contact, but the carbendazine will give some amount of systemic action. So that would answer um, that. Now, unfortunately, we are out of time. We thank you for your, your participation. We, we will note and we encourage you to, some of the questions that we didn't get to ask, we encourage you to place them in the chat and our team will try our best to provide the answers to see him. so until next time i am denton alvaranga your agronomist from newport first and thank you